And we are live. Uh, welcome uh, to Three Martini Lunch, uh, the largest uh, virtual networking event powered by Rockstar Connect. Uh, we do that little countdown because we're doing our broadcast to our Facebook group. We're broadcasting this event on 250 Facebook groups. So for you panelists, you should all be very, very nervous and self-conscious right now. Uh, you can uh, you know, check your hair, check your lipstick and the screen and make sure everything is good. But I assure you, you all look great. Uh, we're doing a lot of interesting things today. We're going to be following the success is contagious format. Uh, everyone, you have control of your mute and unmute. So when you're not speaking, panelists, uh, please uh, mute yourself. When I call on you, uh, then you can unmute yourself. Uh, just realize you are being muted. So if you start to talk, uh, no one will hear you unless you unmute. Uh, something uh, that I'm very excited about today, of course, uh, we have Sarah uh, Elliott, uh, my wife and the co-founder of Rockstar Connect is running uh, the chat audience where people can put all of their questions in that area as well as any information about themselves. Uh, we have the HIO uh, lounge where you can go in and experience speed networking one-on-one -on, -one on video with one another. Uh, and share all your information. Uh, the panelists, they're going to be in the hot seat. We're going to be asking them all sorts of questions and making them squirm a little bit. And uh, the, hopefully they're going to share some great uh, thoughts with us. I know they are, absolutely. Uh, we're here uh, to 2 to 4 p.m. Now, last week, uh, we had a discussion about our new sponsor uh, for Three Martini Lunch. They are uh, our national sponsor. Uh, and we are very excited to have them uh, with us here in the Three Martini uh, lunch event. Uh, our sponsor is Referral Book, and Sarah's going to drop their information into uh, the chat uh, so that everyone can learn about Referral Book. In the meantime, we have the Chief Visionary Officer of uh, Referral Book uh, with us today. His name is Todd Swicegood. And he's going to answer a few questions, not only for me, uh, but also uh, from uh, the people in the panel. Some of you already know him. I see that people are saying, go, Todd. Todd is amazing. And uh, they're real excited to, to hear Todd. Now, uh, Todd, welcome uh, to Three Martini Lunch. Could you tell Thank us you, a bit about, uh, well, tell us a lot about Referral Book and why it's so important for us networkers all over the country to be aware of you. Well, we believe that referral book is the future of networking. Um, referral book was virtual prior to coronavirus. It is a uh, virtual networking platform on the, the backbone of what has been the historical referral networking groups. Uh, the, the difference is we felt that there were some things that we could do uh, that might improve the process. The, the first being we don't require weekly meetings. We, we believe that uh, in the day and age that we live in that people can communicate at a much higher level. We call it high touch or rather high tech with high touch. Um, now, let's see. Oh, okay. you I got you. You're good at that. That was good. That was good. <laughs> um, the, a couple other competitive advantages. We have two formats within our organization. One is that of a founder or circle builder. And that individual comes in and, and we partner with them for free because they're taking on the, the duties and the responsibilities of building a circle of people around them. And um, the other side of the, the cost factor, so we're, we're letting the circle builder come in and partner for free, but the circle members only pay $99 a year. So um, the, the, the cost, it's, you know, less than a hamburger a month. And... Um, we believe that there's going to be a lot of effective um, networking done within. We love what you guys are doing there in Raleigh and, and all over the country for that matter. And uh, we just think it's, it plays well. The accountability is a big factor. Um, most referral networking groups that I've been a part of did not have a really robust accountability platform with referral book. You are required to refer one time a month. Now, we would teach in our referral university LMS learning management system platform to refer and refer often because it 
comes back home to you because of the golden rule or the law of reciprocity. But to stay a member of the group, it requires you to help one other business owner monthly. And that's it. Um, that's all interesting and all, but what, what, are, what is it about this, this road trip you're on? We heard you're on a road trip. And I am on a road trip. Yes, sir. Attic. So I'm in a Regis. What you're doing. Okay. I'm in a Regis office um, right now in Orlando, Florida. I came here because the campground that I was at was a little too noisy and a little low on the bandwidth on the internet. But I'm on a 25, probably 26 state road trip uh, running from North Carolina down to Florida, across the United States, San Diego, up to Washington. And then we'll crisscross back over to Chicago and New England and taking in another states betwixt and between. To share the referral book story, we are going to do 90 different events, speaking engagements over that time period. So we're excited. We think we have a great story to tell and we're excited to share it across the country. Excellent. So on this road trip, uh, you know, no open containers allowed. So when you're stopping at these campgrounds and you're meeting at these offices, are you talking about referral, referral book? Are you signing up people to get these circles? Tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, we're absolutely signing up people. So we are, we, we're, we're primarily putting our focus on referral circle builders because that's where we get our leverage. It's people who want to be the the center of their universe, the center of their of their circle. And, and that's what's really cool about being a circle builder. Um, you get more attention. Uh, I think about the football game on Friday night where everybody is uh, at halftime is watching the band and the big tuba players in the back making all the noise, but it's the conductor of the group that gets more of the attention. So we're building conductors of groups who will shine, get uh, groups and circles put together through the referral book success system platform. And uh, as they get their group put together, they're gonna get more attention. And ultimately we feel a lot more referrals. So there's a bonus for the effort that they make. Excellent, I'm gonna open up uh, some the panel to see if they have any questions for you about referral book or anybody who's using it currently. Uh, Dominic, you had a question? Sorry about that, Stephen. Just had to unmute myself. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Todd, when you get back in town, and I know we can get in touch with you on um, online, uh, what would you say is the best way to leverage referral book to expand our current books of business from beyond our clients to uh, potential news prospects? particularly in this virtual environment. Okay, great. And, and, and thank you for that, Dominic. I, it's so good to see the word North Carolina written on the screen behind you, you know, given the <laughs> health of North Carolina. Um, so there you go. Um, uh, effectively, I'm going to say this, um, I guess I would say it rather aggressively and, and, and say that networking is what we are all about on this call, on this video conference. You guys are, as a group, high-end, very uh, focused networkers. And ultimately, referralbook.com, uh, I, I think of it like this, okay? If you have a big, big, big pile of dirt to move, I can hand you a shovel or I can get you a front-end loader, which is gonna be more effective, faster to get the job done. The obvious answer is it's gonna be the front-end loader. I think that's what referralbook.com is. We're all natural networkers on this call. I think that's why you're here. But I think this is a tool that you can use to take your, your game to the highest level. In the, in the world we live in, margins have been compressed. Uh, COVID-19 has caused a lot of us to have bumps in our road, in our business. So it's really nice to have a tool that you can use to process and manage your referral networking relationships. So it is just like most of the old school referral networking programs, mono profession. So I take New York Life, you would, you would come in as the insurance agent, and it would be about finding people out there that you can help through referrals. So I want to hit, it brings me to the word culture, because culture is what I think is the most important facet, and that is a culture of helping other business people. That's what's really cool about this um, 
Rockstar Connect event is that you guys are all about helping one another. I've seen that so clearly in the weeks and in the month that I've been a part of, of what you're doing. It is that attitude that you, you go out there and you find people who are in non-competing professions, you build a referral networking circle. It only has two requirements. Number one, $99 a year, which is in my estimation, it's less than a hamburger a month. I just had a $25 sushi lunch. It was really good, by the way. Um, I enjoyed it. So, it. so it's very inexpensive to be a member. And as the circle builder, I think getting people over that, over that bump is, is insignificant. But what's most important is about helping, you know, you're inviting people to help other business people. None of us on this call can pass the, um, the $2 trillion uh, giveaway program. I shouldn't say giveaway. Um, the, the program the government did to help all of us through the COVID crisis. None of us can pass that. What we can do is commit to helping our fellow business person. And, you know, I would, I would have everybody on this call to just take a breath for a second and think to your right, to your left, in front of you, behind you, who do you know that's in business that's been impacted by COVID? And I'm sure if you take that moment, you're gonna come up with two or three or four, maybe five names quickly of business people who've been impacted. Here's an opportunity to reach out and really help those people. Get them involved in something that is mutually beneficial. And um, going back to culture, Dominic, I would say the first thing and foremost is about helping others. When you, when you become a circle builder, you take on the, the role of helping other business owners. And when you do that, you're going to win. Excellent. And Clint, you put in the chat that you wanted to ask a question as well. You need to unmute yourself. Sarah, can you help Clint there? Clint, are you on your phone? It says, okay, we can't hear you. So we'll, we'll cut, we'll jump back into this and we can ask some questions a little bit later in the program. All right. So, uh, Todd, you know, rocks, the, the three martini lunch were done on the success is contagious format, which is this really cool format. In fact, uh, Dominic, uh, hosted last week in North Carolina okay. event where we had about 50 people on it utilizing this format and everyone got an opportunity to speak. Since you're probably not too familiar with it, uh, I think I'm going to put you right on the spot <laughs> and, and see what, what we get out of you. So Todd, uh, we already know what you do. You explain that, but most importantly to us, before people utilize your product and do business with you, they want to know that you're a man of integrity, someone that they can know, uh, like, and trust and refer business to. And I assure you, you know, I've, I've broken bread with Todd. He's a great guy. Todd, we want to know what has you, been your success this week? It could be business oriented. It can be personal success. It can be anything, but it's going to let people know a lot about you. If you could share that, please. I'm, I'm limited to one. <laughs> uh, you could give us a couple, but uh, I'll give you a couple. Too, but go ahead. Um, the the first has been uh, great communication with my wife and family, and I've been very thankful for that. Um, that's been a, a major plus. You know, it's um, uh, uh, exciting to be out on the road, but it's also you know set up with with its uh, own set of irritations and loneliness and. Being on the phone with the wife and, and chatting, that's been a blessing. And I'm thankful for that. Um, that was the big, that was the biggest win. The second win. That's a yesterday, big win. Yeah. So, so yesterday I had two meetings. Uh, you know, I, I go and do quite a bit of driving during the day and I had two meetings. The first was with someone I'd never met. I was referred to. We're in the referral business. Turns out he had 600 agents and he's growing at 5% a month. And he was about an hour away from giving a sem seminar, he calls it a mastermind, but he does a, a coaching class on why you as a realtor need to create your own BNI, your own personal BNI. And I, I, I can't tell you the, the timing of that. He, he, he was thrilled that we were sitting down. So he met me at 730. Then I went to a lunch meeting a, a mile down the road and um, had a lot of no-shows. 
So I ta I'm talking with the guy that, that set it up, and it turns out he has uh, relationships all over Florida with another major real estate brokerage firm, and we're setting up to speak to about 5,000 agents because of that meeting. Totally unexpected, totally thankful. And it's just a matter of being out there and, and, and you know, being out there in the hunt, you run into those kind of opportunities. That's pretty exciting and thrilling. Katya, uh, I have a quick question for you from, from Lisa Marie. She had a technical question and she had to drop off, but she said, as a host of a Rockstar Connect and other events, how can we leverage referral book in conjunction with our live events? So, so, you know, it's so, it's so funny when, when I first met you, Stephen, you and Sarah, and you were so nice. And by the way, that was a great pizza. Let's not forget that. Um, but, you know, my early hesitation was, are we competitive or is, you know, is this something? And it's quite the contrary. We are, um, we, we're absolutely non-competitive. I think that we're a complement to one another. So you're doing these great events and we're setting up the tool. I'm going to go back to the, uh, the tool being the um, front end loader to move the referrals back and forth. We're giving a process and that pro so you're out there, you're connecting, you're developing relationships and that is what it's all about. But then you have a process that causes, um, we call it the referral book success system. It causes those referrals to happen. Excellent. Well, we're all about success. And this week, you know, at the first hour, we're always sharing our successes and telling a little bit about ourselves. I'd like to welcome uh, one of uh, the audience's uh, favorite panelists. He wasn't with us last week. He's back with us here again. Uh, welcome, uh, Tommy Episcopo. If you could unmute yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself, but more about what successes you've had this week. I had an awesome week. I spoke with a couple of panelists here. I spoke with Dominic. We had a great call. I spoke with Bruce Hill. We had a great call. Um, I am right in the middle of launching this brand new website. I, I, I said I would be ready last week. I spoke a little too soon. we will probably be up and running this week. Um, like I said, I got a great, a great, great compliment last week and it came to fruition this week. I had a, an, a client actually send her daughter to me, not for anything I do, but to come and work for me as an agent, which was a, a, a huge compliment to me. So her paperwork went in and she's ready to go. So um, great week, even though we're kind of, and I think we're starting our live events again in um, July. So Todd, I'm going to definitely need to speak with you. Okay. So um, I know you're in Florida now. I don't know how long you're here for. Maybe I can meet up with you somewhere. That'd be great you know, uh, and just find out a little bit more about what you do. But it, it, all in all, everything's been good. That's fantastic. So glad to have you back. And, and uh, everyone else is going to really be excited to hear in the second part, your answer to the question for the day. I'm going to go directly over to Lisa Marie, uh, to Lisa Marie. If you can unmute yourself. Uh, I wanted to start with you first, because I know you're having a little bit of technical difficulties here. And I didn't want to miss the opportunity uh, to hear from you. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Great to see you again. Lisa Marie Wand. I live in Reno, Nevada, and I'm a commercial real estate broker here. I'm also, uh, for about two and a half years, been a host of a Rockstar Connect event here in Reno. And I'm also involved in a lot of nonprofit work and helping to grow our community. So what I'm happy to report is that commercial real estate is back online and rocking and rolling. Um, a lot of business owners and investors had some big question marks like we all did during COVID. So I'm happy to say that business is, um, business is happening again and there's some pent up need for, um, for real estate, specifically commercial real estate where people are ready to start investing and spending money. Cash is king right now. So I see people selling properties and wanting to hold on to a dollar today. I feel like we'll be worth two or three dollars tomorrow. So. I'm excited and my event will be back up online in July, uh, Northern Nevada's largest networking event. So I'm very excited about that and happy to be here today. Thank you, Stephen. 
Thank you. And we're excited to have your uh, event and Tommy's event rolling soon as well. Yes. And uh, maybe when Todd's on his road trip, he can hang uh, some time with you out there in uh, Nevada. I would love uh, that. Thank Kate, you. let's uh, move over to Katie. If you can unmute, unmute yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself, Katie, and uh, your, you know, what you've done with Rockstar Connect. And also, what is your success for the week? I don't hear her. Katie, we don't hear you. Is your mic uh, plugged in? Let's try unmuting her again. Testing. Mm? No. <laughs> Katie, nope, we're not hearing you. Let's, we'll come back to you when you check out your system. Okay, sorry about that, Katie. Can't hear you still. Uh, okay, uh, Dominic. Yes, sir, Stephen. How are you today? I'm doing well. It just seems like the internet is shutting out everybody's voice today, so I'm not happy with that. Well, the internet will not stop me, so let's do this. Okay, let's go for it. <laughs> okay. What's your question? <laughs> okay. So, you know, we know what you do. It says it right there. What has yeah, your course. success has been this week, though? Oh, man, I've had some uh, great successes. I helped uh, a client in Virginia last night um, cover their key person uh, issues that they have for their business. Uh, I'm starting to see businesses as they're opening up and generating some revenue, getting ready to take care of some of the issues that they, they know they've had uh, to take care of for the last three or four months, but just have been a little unsure about their cash flow. Uh, so that's great to see. Um, and uh, I have had the opportunity uh, since we met last Tuesday to be on the podcast of not one, but two of the other panelists on this call, uh, both Jenny Midgley's Girls Who Do Stuff podcast, as well as Mike Manning's BNI podcast. So that was a fantastic success. And I'm looking, uh, you know, Mike, uh, the, the BNI podcast was live. We had over 11,000 uh, live viewers online. And uh, I don't know how many more are going to watch it on YouTube and social media. And then I'm excited uh, for um, the release of my podcast with Jenny. I'm really, really excited about that. So uh, how many people, great success. In, how many people were in the North Carolina event and how long did that go? The virtual, Oh, the North Carolina event? event. Oh yeah. I forgot. That was a huge success too. I mean, there were, I mean, there were over at least 40 people at one point. I wasn't checking the numbers the entire time. I know we got to two or three screens uh, and it, it was initially scheduled for one hour. It went a full two hours. I really think uh, when we do that, Stephen, from now on, we just need to, we just need to have it booked for two hours and make sure everybody's aware of the time, maybe start at six instead of seven. But, you know, that being said, we had, uh, you know, we had most everybody stay for the full two hours. We had great participation. We had great answers to the question. And I can't wait to hear what today's question is uh, for Success is Contagious, because uh, everybody on this panel is an absolute certified expert in their field, and they all have something extremely valuable to say. So um, I'm really excited for the second part. Okay, well, we'll have a good question for you, and it'll make everyone think. Let's Sweet. go see if Katie's got her mic backing up and back and running. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Oh, so, yeah. wow. All can right, so I'm Katie, I'm Katie Blumquist, and I'm the founder and executive director of the nonprofit Going Places, and we provide new custom bikes to every single child at once in the low-income elementary schools and big surprise bike reveals. And I also have a side business where I teach people how to start nonprofits and grow them um, successfully in the first year. So I've been hosting Rockstar Connect for two and a half years. And I'm very excited to get back to the in-person next month. I was told I get to um, be back at our spot. So I'm, that'll be fun. And a success for this week, um, for the LLC where I teach people how to start nonprofits. Um, I had two successful sales calls yesterday. I think I may sign them up and then tomorrow. Yeah. And then tomorrow we're going, we kind of had to pivot in this time since we weren't able to give our bikes in May, we'll have to do it this probably winter. Um, we created these 
things called bundles of joy for all the kids, um, the, the disadvantaged kids and their families. So it was bags full of fun activities for the whole family to um, do together since these families don't always know how to spend family time together. And so in the bags, there was like Jenga and puzzles and coloring books and a mini terrarium and a kite and just tons of awesome stuff. Um, we didn't spend any money on it. We actually had 425 items bought for us um, off of our Amazon wish list in just a matter of a few weeks. So tomorrow we're going to give out the second half of all of the bundles of joy um, at one of the school district's produce food uh, location pickups. That's fantastic. And, you know, if anyone would like to, to, contri uh, to contribute to Katie's cause, uh, she's going to drop her information into okay. the chat so you're able to do that. But also, um, you know, Katie uh, has been sponsored uh, by Fathom Realty for the first two and a half years of her program. And they've been terrific sponsors and paid for her event every month. And uh, I just wanted to indicate that we are very lucky at Rockstar Connect to have her as a host. And we are going to continue to host her event and we are going to be the new sponsor for her event. So Katie wasn't aware of that, but we're- Oh, your that's sponsor. awesome, thank you. Yeah, this and has been- We're very excited. Thank Go ahead, you. sorry. No, I'm saying thank you. <laughs> yeah. So that's gonna give us an opportunity to really focus on uh, your, your foundation and your charity and everything that you're doing. Because uh, not only does Katie want to do this just in South Carolina, she's going to be doing this everywhere. So yeah, that's people the goal. Want to, want to have a chapter because, I mean, how great is this? We're in COVID. Bicycles are one thing that kids can really do outside where they social distance from one another. They're out in the fresh air. They're building their immunity system. And, and also, you know, home, like a lot of these kids, home is not a safe, predictable place. Um, mm -hmm. And so having been trapped at home for the past however, however many months now that we're in, domestic abuse has gone up. Um, and so at least a bike gives them a way to get out of the house and escape it, that unpleasant environment, even, you know, for a few hours. Absolutely. And, and healthy children with healthy immune systems, that's great for healthy families as well. <clears throat> so, you know, you're, you're definitely, your cause was extremely important before uh, COVID, but it's even more important now. So if anybody would like to reach out on the panel to Katie, uh, that would be terrific. And, and she gives a lot of, you know, if you do make a donation, she gives you a lot of recognition on her social media. Her social mm -hmm. media is, is top notch. She's definitely someone that I follow. Yeah. Thank we're very, um, we're very, it's very important to us to highlight the companies that donate to us more than just, you know, a one shout out deal. So we have something called community supporters where depending on how much you give, um, we promote not just saying thanks every month, but we promote the things that you're doing in your business and the, your wins um, in our social media outlets. And depending on how much you give, there's a, a whole schedule for that. So I'd be happy to send any information your way on that. Terrific. And we can't wait to help make you more successful. Thanks. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Doug, uh, Welcome uh, to the panel. This is your first time. Uh, we love your last name, Nicodemus. Very great name. If you could tell us a little bit about yourself. And, Absolutely. Uh, and uh, then if you could share your successes uh, for the week with us, please. Certainly. So uh, I'm Doug uh, Nicodemus. Uh, I work closely with uh, Todd Swicegood at Referral Book. I'm the COO. And I really uh, work to make sure that uh, our, our program, as well as as our circle builders and members are working efficiently and, and building out the circles and that type of thing. So um, that's what I do uh, from, from that standpoint. Um, successes for the week. Uh, I just uh, got back from Phoenix last night. Uh, I'm currently sitting in Des Moines, Iowa. And so it's a little cooler here in, in Iowa than it is uh, down in, in Phoenix, but uh, um, I'm in the process of actually relocating down into the Phoenix area. So uh, here in a couple of weeks, I'll make uh, that drive from Des Moines to, to Phoenix and, and start the process from that end. So um, uh, welcome, and uh, I'm glad to be part of the panelist uh, program today. That's terrific. And I understand, Doug, that you're going to be starting a Rockstar Connect event in the Phoenix. Greater Absolutely. But I'm, I'm looking forward to that and uh, thinking that uh, uh, will certainly uh, uh, be a great thing for, for, for all. I agree 100%. Thank you so much, Doug. And uh, 
I'm, we're going to, you're going to stay with us because you're going to participate in the deeper questions in the next part of the program. Absolutely. Stephen, can I, can I throw this in? I did have a question for Katie just before, oh, yeah, um, you know, I was just wondering if your organization, is it national or is it more community based there in South Carolina? Oh, I was actually just in the middle of responding to that. Um, I saw you type in the chat. So we're not yet. Um, currently we just fundraise for the bikes in our community, but our definite goal is to expand nationally and actually working with Fathom, um, we're going to be expand. We are one of the four charities they support on a national level. And so we will be expanding into um, like Raleigh and some of these other cities um, around the country. But as soon as we find a company or two that want to partner together, um, that want to sponsor all the bikes for a low income school near their business, we'll put their logo on the bike um, along with our logo because our bikes are custom made. They're not just bikes you go buy at Walmart. So it's really good marketing because when you see 15 kids riding down the street in a neon green and white bike, it kind of catches your attention. You instantly know, oh, those are the going places bikes. So um, as soon as you know, I'm happy to talk to anyone about that, if it's something they're interested in, we also have sustained funding. So if you can't afford all of them at once, you can pay a certain amount over two to three years, which we hold aside. And then, uh, you know, you're the only sponsor at the bike reveal. Okay. Thank you. you. I would assume your coaching is available, uh, nationwide though, right? Oh, oh yes. Almost. <laughs> I only have a couple people in my, um, in my course that live in Charleston they're all over the country. Um, and I, I, you know, Rocks Art Connect is one of the main, you know, networking events I recommend to them and I give links to it. I mean, I give lots of advice on networking in like the cities that you live in um, and along with everything else that would apply to not just Charleston, but where you live. Thank you. Steven, you're muted. I guess Sarah muted me because I must have been tapping my fingers or, you know, making ice noises or something. <laughs> That's what I was doing. But uh, Katie's course is available to anyone that would like to take it. And it's valuable for, I speak to many for-profits and they say, we would love to have our own charity. They would like to have a not, not for profit foundation. They just have no idea where to start. And a lot of the courses available out there are extremely complicated and they don't start from, you know, from number one, number two, number three. They assume that you've done it before. But Katie will help you with that. I mean, it's something that I could see, like, you know, Mark being interested in or Lisa Marie or Tommy. Uh, really, you know, Sarah's raising her hand there. She's very interested in it as well. So, uh, Katie, you know, I, I really wanted you as a, a guest this week because I knew you would get along with all these panelists. So we appreciate you being back. I'm sure people are going to ask, continue to ask you questions. Yes, hey, <laughs> um, thank you. Hey, Mike Manning, welcome to the show. Welcome back. Thank you, Stephen. Glad to be back. Uh, good to see everybody today. My name is Mike Manning. I'm a business coach at Wired to Change. My coaching partner, Trinity French, and I love working with small business owners to focus on sales and marketing systems and processes. You got to know who your ideal client is. You got to track your numbers so you know why your phone's ringing and more importantly, why your phone stops ringing. Uh, my successes uh, this week had a bunch. My wife showed me how to get more organized with Word documents, which was great. But mine too are podcast successes. And through this uh, networking event, Clint was on our Wired to Change podcast last week. Dominic was on my BNI show yesterday. Jenny and Sarah have been on our show before, but I have two big heavyweights coming up, Stephen. The biggest maybe that the entire universe has ever heard. On June 25th, Mark Roberts is going to grace the studios, but more importantly, on July 2nd, Sarah Elliott is going to grace our studios. So very much looking forward to having both of them. That's I'm definitely the warm-up act. Yeah, for sure. I would say that any of the any of the panelists that go on three martini lunch, you know, past or present, would be you know fantastic uh, guests for you. I don't know if you've spoken uh, with uh, Tommy before, but he would make an excellent uh, guest on your program. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, let's make sure we make that connection. Welcome, David Linsky. 
Tell us a little bit about yourself, but most importantly, well, we already see your success. You're obviously in sunny Florida, outside on your porch. And is that the ocean behind you or is, is or am I imagining it? Yeah, it, it is. So uh, that's a, a great success. Can't complain about that. Um, my name is David Linsky. I work with Thomas Piscopo down there in my right corner. I'm not sure about you guys, but what we do is we teach individuals and businesses how to understand their current financial situation and use the money they're already spending on debt to eliminate it in a much more efficient manner, essentially building their own bank. So once they're out of debt, they don't have to go back into it. A success I had this week is actually pretty funny because we had our event last week for Rockstar, uh, the West Palm event, and Sarah was our uh, mediator. And she asked the question, what have you done in business that you wish you did and, and are you able to say no to things? And the thing I said is whenever there's an opportunity, I kind of don't think about the money that's going involved. I kind of just do it based off the way the person's talking, how I feel about them. Sometimes not the best. And about eight months ago, I did one of those things where it's here's some money. Okay. We're going to advertise you on our website. Eight months, not one person responds after we go over that topic and I'm complaining about it and saying how that's my biggest fault. I get three people over the last few days to hit me through my landing page on that site. And it looks like we're gonna get a few clients out of it. So I guess my success is just holding out and understanding, be patient and, and it always works out. It's, it's, all about, it's all about consistency right? You know, you, you keep keep going and, and working at it, you get better. I mean, I'm excited because David's event in Fort Lauderdale uh, was booked today. They're trying to reach out to you to confirm that, but we're ready to get your Fort Lauderdale event up. And I believe, uh, I believe the West Palm one may already be up. So we're getting these events going in Florida and we're very excited about that. You know, Tommy's event is coming up as well. The West um, Palm event is ready to go. We'll do that one in July. And then we have the Jupiter one that we're working on. I believe that'll happen in August. Then I believe the Palm Beach Gardens one will be after that. So we have a lot going on. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's a couple of things I need to talk to you guys about because I may have some opportunities where we booked some venues that may not be exactly in your area where you may want to throw down, you know, an event to get people excited. Uh, Miss, Mr. Roberts. And I, yes, I sir. You remember that movie i do yeah well who was who starred in that <sighs> yep i can picture his face and i can't name it i know mike manning is chopping at the bit because he knows it mike manning <laughs> starred in mr roberts that's not the jimmy stewart movie is it gosh i don't know sir you're gonna have to look at one of the versions jack lemon was it jack jack lemon? jack was in one of the versions yes yeah. Mark was living back then. I was not. So he would have a better memory. <laughs> Mark would have a better idea. Yeah. So, uh, Mark, I know you've had a lot of successes because every panelist that I speak to has said they, they've had a one on one with you. I've, I've been very, very successful with that. We've been very, very fortunate. Um, the, the one I was thinking of is I actually got a good night's sleep for the first time in about four weeks. For those of us that have insomnia, you know, that's a huge, huge deal. So if I start talking a little too fast today or something, just let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm wired uh, and I can't wait to be unwired for change. Speaking of which, so I'm going to be very excited to warm up the crowd for Sarah. Uh, but we, we've been doing very, very well. Uh, things have been, been very fortunate for us. So Mr. <laughs> Mr. Roberts starred Henry Fonda, 1954. 55. 1955, and it is probably available on Amazon Prime because they have every movie known to man there. Also in that movie, James Cagney was Captain Morton and William Powell as Doc, and Jack Lemmon as, en as Ensign Holder. Oh, right. Yeah, he played a great role in that. He was more of the, co more of the comic relief. So check out Mr. Roberts. Great movie. <laughs> Hello, Jenny Midgley. Welcome back. Jenny got Hi, me. sorry, I had to unmute. <laughs> Couldn't figure where my, my cursor was. It was on my other screen where the chat is. <laughs> it's only <laughs> right. Hey, I'm here. Um, so yeah. Um, all right, wins for the last week. Um, 
Let me see. Yeah, Dominic was on the podcast. That was huge. Um, that was so much fun. And um, Sarah is coming on in July. Sarah Elliott is booked and coming on in July. So that's going to be super fun. Um, I, um, uh, I have a really great marketing copywriter that works with me. And she is really pushing me outside my comfort zone. <laughs> just going to say that has been a win that I needed. Um, so, um, and my um, enrollment for my online course is opening up in the next week and the next round starts the end of the month. So I'm super excited about that. What is uh, the course about? Um, it is called Stories and Strategy, Creating Content That Sells Without Being Salesy. And it's about putting the uh, what to post and where to put your stuff so that you're speaking to your ideal clients and um, drawing them in instead of throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping something will stick with your digital marketing plans. So it's eight weeks and um, six modules over eight weeks and you get a one-on-one -on -one with me and you walk away with a strategy and implementation system to make your content work for you instead of you feeling overwhelmed like, and then falling into analysis paralysis and down the rabbit hole of never putting anything out there. So you're wondering where your clients are if you don't market. <laughs> so. Well, I love, I love that everyone is, is starting courses. You know, Sarah and I, prior to COVID, uh, we worked for several months and we have about 16 hours of videos that we put uh, on tape on how to have your own networking event. And we also uh, have our, uh, basically our second book is coming out of that course. So stay tuned to learn about that course because we're going to share every secret we know of hosting events for over 10, event, uh, 10 years and how awesome. to do it yourself. Hey, th thank you, Jenny. Clint, uh, Mr. Clint Webb. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Sweet. Okay. So um, I, I want to save my, I have two questions for Todd, but I'm going to save those for the end. Um, so successes for this week, you know, besides getting through graduation and all of that stuff happening. So yay, that's over and done with. Um, successes. I uh, had an in-person meeting yesterday with a, what's going to be a new client when they move into their new space. So actually getting in front of people and being able to meet in an office um, is, and was fantastic. It was a very productive meeting and they're going to be spending a lot of money with me. So that's always good. Um, another success is uh, I have a one-on-one -on -one finally tomorrow with Miss Jenny. So that's going to be pretty epic. I have a feeling. Um, and let's see, Todd. Okay. Two things. Um, number one, how do we spread the word for you? And, um, in the spirit of helping, um, I always, I'm, I, I want to get the word out for you for sure. And for two specifically, how would we help, um, restaurant owners? How would this book help restaurant owners? I have a lot of friends that own restaurants that are, some of them are struggling, some of them are not, but if, is this a way, is this book something that can do that for them? Todd, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, I can do that. Am I not, am I not muted or unmuted? You're good. You're good. Okay. Um, so um, thank you, Clint, for the first question. Share the link, referralbook.com. Share it often. I appreciate your uh, kind willingness to do that. And, you know, I'm, I want to become just like Bubba Gump Shrimp, a household name. So that that is the goal, uh, without a doubt. Yeah, I'm, that, I'm sorry. I got a lot of euphemisms from that movie. It's great. I still like the Apple company, uh, <laughs> but um, no, to your point, and I agree with you, I think restaurants are in such the ditch. And I, I got to tell you that I think referral book is, is more centered for service organizations. However, if you give me a referral circle of 30 or 40 members, then I can share the word. And, and you know, I'm going to go back to that whole culture of giving. The, the, the restaurant mayor certainly can be a part of a referral circle, but given their, their business uh, modus operandi, they, they're out to serve the entire world. But you can go to your, and let's we'll start right here on Rockstar Connect and, and the Three Martini Lunch. We can share the stories of our friends who are struggling with their restaurants through this COVID-19 crisis, share it everywhere. I mean, I don't think this is a referral book thing. I think this is a share it everywhere and help those people. 
even to the point of asking, I mean, for those restaurants who have yet to be opened up, encourage your friends to go and buy a gift certificate. Uh, give those people some revenue because we want them here the other side. I, I'm, a, I'm a foodie and I love my restaurants. So I want them, you know, rocking just like you do. And I want to see those people survive and thrive. Well, uh, to restaurants, it's important now, if you are going out to restaurants, I know a lot of people aren't ready yet to go to restaurants. That doesn't mean you're not supporting them in another way. But uh, Sarah and I have gone to a few of our, of our friends' restaurants in order to support them. Uh, we're doing social media posts. Uh, we're sharing it you know, wherever we possibly can. Uh, whenever we see a local uh, restaurant, whether we go there or not, do a post on Facebook, we automatically share, reshare it uh, just to give them support. It's the resharing that is extremely important. Uh, hey, Stephen. Yes. Um, I have one more thing I forgot, and I don't want to forget to mention this. Um, uh, another success for this week is getting booked on Katya's podcast for early July. So that's going to be amazing. I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that Katya Rame is going to be, um, you know, she has this podcast and she is amazing and I cannot wait to be on it. Well, I, I'm sort of surprised and a little bit hurt that you didn't mention that I'm having a meeting uh, with you. I didn't want to make everybody feel bad, Stephen. <laughs> Last time you made people feel bad by mentioning that. So yes, tomorrow is going to be awesome. Sarah and I have already talked about that before everybody joined. Yeah, and uh, I'm and Dominic is is coming to that as well. We're meeting some of our our North Carolina hosts, and we're going to be meeting with all of them over the next uh, few weeks. So Mark, don't feel sad. Uh, and uh, whenever anybody meets with me, I I cook a meal. You know, so there's always going to be something good. And Todd, if you swear by that pizza, I think I'll make some pizza tomorrow. It, it was I think to tomorrow today. Yeah, so I'll make, I'll make a few pizzas and we'll be good. Hey, uh, so successes on my end here for Rockstar Connect, and, and I'll speak for Sarah and myself because they're joint successes. Uh, last week, I shared with you that we have uh, a, a large, in addition to our employees in the U.S., we have a large staff in the Philippines. These are not people that are just casually related to Rockstar Connect. These are people that have been with us uh, some of them uh, for five years. They work with us full time. We speak with them every day. Uh, Philippines, very horrible situation as far as COVID. They are on a complete 100% lockdown. They're only able to leave their homes every two weeks to go shopping uh, for a period of time. Uh, and this is under, not here where they may find you. I don't know if they'll find you here, but if there, if you go out when you're not supposed to, you will be shot. Uh, many people have lost uh, their jobs there and our, uh, our employees said, hey, it's great. You've been keeping us working. Can you help us by uh, getting more work for our friends and our family members that are here in the Philippines? Because literally, if we don't have, if we don't have work, we don't have stimulus packages. We don't have anything like that. We just starve. So to that end, uh, Sarah and I, you know, we love we love to support people. And we also love to start companies. Uh, we started a new company called uh, Carefree Closings, and we're utilizing uh, family members of our staff in the Philippines and uh, our current staff to do uh, uh, contract to close and concierge services uh, for real estate agents. So everybody go check out that website. It's rocking and rolling. Uh, Sarah uh, created it yesterday with the team. And uh, another success, I've been doing intermittent fasting now for I'd say five months. And I don't have one bit of clothing that isn't like super enormous now. It's like those before and after. Thank you. So those before and after videos and I'm continuing to lose about a pound every two days and I'm feeling a lot better. My health is a lot better. Uh, no more, you know, acid reflux. Thank God, knock on wood. So I'm going to keep that up. And I, you know, eventually I will go into a store and have to go buy new clothing when Sarah is fed up with me wearing these big giant moos that I'm wearing. So I, I want to thank think everyone. Yes, Clint, go ahead. Are you drinking all of the water as well? 
I drink a lot. I was always a big water drinker. So this is my water mm -hmm. glass right here. Nice. And I must drink, you know, six of these a day. Yeah. You have a yeah. They water. say half your, half your body weight in ounces of water every day. Lots and lots of water just to flush out all that garbage. And now my body is starting to reject some of my, my favorite, uh, my uh, favorite foods. So something we did this uh, weekend, we had some close friends over that we have not seen in four months. You know, we did practice social distancing for you. People are going to call us out on it and shame on you. You know, we need relationships. We're networking people. So a local person advertised the most incredible, beautiful cake on his Facebook page. And it, he had a, a black, it's a black owned business and he makes these things from his home. And I said, well, you know, we need to put our money where our mouth is. We're going to support a local black community. We're going to support a local business because we support local businesses. And we got this incredible cake. It was massive. It was like 14 inches tall and eight inches wide. And then we had about a quarter of that cake with our guests. And then we cut it up and we delivered it to friends and family all over town. So it ended up about 14 people enjoyed that cake. So this is an opportunity. You can start going out to visit some people as long as you wash your hands, wear a mask when appropriate, keep the distance. That's one way you can support local businesses. You know, do some takeout and uh, or you know, go to a local caterer and support them. Okay, so we're coming up on uh, the second hour of the program, and this is where I love to put people in the hot seat. So we have, you know, we have a topic today and we all also, I follow everything that you guys do. I follow you on social media because I live on social media. To give you an example, I started a new, uh, you know, social media community group uh, about one year ago and it's now reaching, it'll reach 9,000 people this week. So in order to nurture groups like that, community groups, and I have dozens of dozens of them you're on facebook and i see what you guys do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk a little bit about what i see your social media presence to be if uh if i think that uh, you're sort of new to it i might give you some tips uh and the question of the day though is the question that i'm going to ask you is if you could spend and we've all seen this on social media because we're i know you're on social media a lot the question is, if you could spend time with anyone living or dead, and that could be a celebrity or a family member, who would that be and why? And get a little bit into you know, how that's going to impact your business. Dominic is dying there because he, he, he hates this topic. Is it hard? Let, well, let's start with Dominic then, since he's... Oh, I'm just, I'm just laughing. I'm laughing about this because I, I, I just recently got asked this exact question on another podcast and there's a fellow panelist who gave me hell for my answer. So I'm going to have to change it no, no, just for him. Okay. So, so, it, well, I mean, you know, you've got to change things up, Steven, you got to change things up. You can't, you can't give the same old Teddy Roosevelt answer every single time. Right. Mike Manning. Oh, I've heard about this. There's yeah. nothing wrong with Teddy Roosevelt either. Like, we went down the rabbit hole about Teddy Roosevelt. There's nothing wrong with Teddy Roosevelt. There's, uh, I mean, it, but I will, I will change my answer and I'll do something a little bit more personal. And I would say that if I could have one meal with any person, living or dead, I would do anything to get one last meal with my babshi. So that's Polish for grandmother. If you don't know, um, you know, she was my inspiration for becoming a chef and, you know, she's passed away. Yeah. It's, it's been over 10 years now, but I still miss her. So uh, I would, I would love to get an opportunity to have one last meal with her. Well, I can appreciate that. And I can understand that a hundred percent, but uh, Teddy Roosevelt would be an excellent, Excellent. It would be an excellent conversation, wouldn't it? Wow. <laughs> I mean, be, I'd be a little intimidated by Teddy Roosevelt, but that would be definitely a great conversation. So I, I follow your social media and you are very consistent in your social media. Uh, you tend to post a lot of humorous posts, posts about your family. What are some quick tips you can give so people can achieve what you're doing with your social media? 
Sure. So, uh, I mean, you see the humorous and and the family post because you, uh, I, I think you see more of me on uh, on Facebook. That's where I, I, you know, I let the the personality out a bit more, and that's uh, that's really what you need to do is, uh, you know, build your personal brand, especially there where you know it, it's kind of more acceptable than just, uh, well, not even just more acceptable. It's expected, other than just um, you know focusing on your business and if you want to know how to do that in the right way and tell the right narrative that you want to uh, convey to people you definitely need to take Jenny Midgley's course because that is what it's all about is building your personal brand the type of brand that no matter what industry you go into and no matter who you bring into your network and your tribe you can take with you but I will say uh, that on the other side I do spend a tremendous amount of time on LinkedIn and one of the critical things that you can do on LinkedIn is make sure that uh, one, you you keep your your message simple, you keep it positive, and you utilize well traveled hashtags on LinkedIn. Now I've got I've got a post that's trending right now. I mean it's literally the top of six different hashtags. It's got like a hundred and seventy five thousand views right now and that's over a four day period of time. And it's it's because the message was about you know leaders showing compassion to their workers right now who, you know, there's a special kind of stress going on in the workplace. People who are working from home can't disconnect. You know, when they do disconnect, the COVID thing is in their face. The civil unrest is in their face. And it's just a, a completely different type of stress. And, uh, you know, being able to convey that message of compassion, understanding that the, the people that, you know, help make you what you are as a leader, uh, they need you to show them the same kind of support and really make them take a break from all of that, like almost like force time off. Uh, but, you know, that, that those are the types of messages. And then you add the hashtags on top of it. And that's going to get you a ton of exposure, especially in the professional side of social media. Ex some excellent tips. You know, it's a fine balance. I almost feel like I want to start just putting everything I do on Facebook on LinkedIn. See how that I, I wouldn't. Uh, so it, it's probably it not the like best it. idea to to do that. Uh, I would I would definitely be putting more of the rock star networking and especially the success is contagious stuff on LinkedIn. But you know maybe all the food picks and I know you love your food picks, man. Mm -hmm. You do a great job with those. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily live on LinkedIn. But people who consume your content on LinkedIn can go over to Facebook. You can direct them over there where they can see your personality, or if they pick you up on link on Facebook, you can direct them over there to LinkedIn to see your professional stuff. And again, if you sign up for Jenny Mitchley's course, she will tell you exactly how to do that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to prove you both wrong. Cause I'm going to start putting like puppies and food pics up on on facebook excuse me on linkedin because they work so well on facebook they get so much business and so many people connecting to me go and for so it. much on linkedin is so boring oh god there is a place for it i will say that there is a place for food pics and puppies on linkedin yeah it i'll find that group and I'm, I'm gonna start posting there because you know the more puppies the better i think in in this day and age we need lots of puppies so we, we have some uh, new panelists uh, joining us today. I'm not going to throw you guys in on the question yet. You'll hear other people answer, and I'll come back to you for the question. But uh, so what we do, Jack, Jacqueline Wittenberg, you're new uh, as a panelist. What we do uh, at the beginning in the first hour is all the panelists share who they are and what their successes have been for the last week. More so about your successes and who you are, because people don't really, you know, people don't really care what you do. They want to know what you define as a success. And then when they know that, they'll know, you know, everything they need to know, whether they should do business with you. And then we'll come to you, Robert, right after that. No pressure, Jacqueline. So Jacqueline <laughs> briefly, what you do. And uh, secondly, what has your success has been this week? 
Well, what I do is wake up every day of my life um, thinking about the what next. And that what next is what can I do to contribute to society? It's not gonna only make things better for me, but make things better for others. And so on that note, I am, everything that I do is driven by my passion. And one of the things that I'm passionate about is making sure that everybody has an opportunity. And so I do mine through education because I'm one of 12 children and education was something that was extremely important in my family. And it was um, something that had, I've been taught all of my life that my success would depend on. And when I say success, success to me doesn't necessarily mean material things or money. Success to me means being able to contribute something to society that makes us all great. And when we're all focused on creating greatness, I think the world becomes a better place or an easier place to live in. And um, just this weekend, I had a two-day visit from my godson, who is now 27 years old, graduate of Wake Forest University. And we talked about those very things. Um, I think with a lot of uh, young people, in particular, and many adults, when you're not honest with yourself about, if you've never asked yourself, what am I good at? And then be honest with yourself when that question is answered, when you answer that question honestly. Because what that happens, what happens is that helps you to determine what your passion is. And your passion leads to your success. And that is a very conversation that I had with my godson this uh, last two days is, have you asked yourself and been honest with yourself, what are you good at? And then take those things and turn that into your success because you've already defined your passion. And so that's really what I'm about, living my life, um, being honest with myself, staying true to myself so that I can passionately do what I do to help other people. Thank you, Jackie. If you could share your information about your foundation so people can uh, learn more about uh, you know, your day-to-day -day work as well in the community, we greatly appreciate that. If you could just put that in the chat. And we're going to come back to you with the question of the day. So just hang in there. Don't go anywhere. Okay, thank you. We'll do. Very good. Rhonda, I'm going to come to you after I, I speak with Robert. Uh, Robert, tell us a little bit about yourself, but more so, what has your success has been this week? Um, success is this week. Well, I got the stuff out of my ear finally. Well, it's this ear, see? <laughs> yeah. Good <laughs> Um my wife and I, we own Financial Independence LLC. We help individuals and business owners eliminate debt, just like Tommy down here on the bottom. Um, successes, other than my ear, uh, just making contacts with people, um, staying in touch with people, starting to get a little traction with uh, Alignable, which is interesting. I've had a couple people reach out to me from that, that service, so it's been good. Well, congratulations. That's fantastic. Uh, welcome from California, Rhonda Share. Hey, Stephen. So nice to be here. So what are we doing? Should I introduce myself or? Yeah, I'd like to know a little bit about yourself and, and what is your success been this week? Uh, so what I do is I help entrepreneurs, business owners get out of LinkedIn witness protection. In other words, I show you how to get found and be the only logical choice. Yes, and the best part is have a simple system so that you can book two to 10 appointments a week with your ideal clients. I see Dominic's raising his hand. <laughs> it's your ideal clients or referral partners. And um, so that's, that's primarily what I do. And I absolutely love it because I just keep meeting the most amazing people. Um, so success for this week, that's a good question. Actually, you know, it's funny. Um, LinkedIn, I don't know if you guys know anything about this, but there's something called engagement groups on LinkedIn where you have a group of people that are, you know, together. And what you do is you just like and comment and sometimes share other people's posts. And so somehow I got invited into one of these engagement groups with a group of amazing people. I mean, I'm talking about very high level, high integrity people. And one of them just happened to be a gentleman whose whole mission is to make people smile. He actually created a, a foundation out of this. And, um, 
And so the success for me is that I decided, you know, every day I'm just going to acknowledge somebody or do a random act of kindness. I just decided, okay, I'm going to take that on. And so I reached out to this guy, his name is Michael Ray. And I, I called him and he had the most uplifting voicemail I have ever heard when you call somebody. Seriously, you ever get a voicemail and it's just like you light up. And I left him a message and I said, hey, you know what? I wanna know how you did this. Now he has, a, he has a daughter who has Down syndrome, who's 21, and he does videos with her. And they just make you smile, they make you light up, but his numbers are through the roof on engagement. I mean, through the roof. And I just said, hey, listen, you know what? I have a gift for you. I just wanna help you upgrade your profile a little bit because you are doing so much good in the world. And we had the most amazing conversation. So that was really my success. And, you know, in asking him how I could help him pay it forward with what he's doing, because he's not really making money with it. It's just, he was the most genuine, uplifting guy I've ever seen. And when you look at the numbers on his likes and comments, I mean, we're talking about, you know, thousands and it's all organic. So very cool. And you need to check him out. Well, that's terrific. If you could drop drop his name into the chat so we can well, uh, share a little love, a little bit of love with him. I'm gonna yeah, go. Be great to put on the panel too, just to share oh, what yeah. you. We love to have him on the panel. Absolutely. Uh, Todd Swicegood, are you unmuted? Yes, sir. Okay, great. <clears throat> so you were the the chief visionary officer of Referral Book. Uh, you are a sponsor of this event uh, today, Three Martini Lunch. We wanna thank you for sponsoring in order for us to bring this to the thousands of people that are watching this on Facebook Live. Social media, you're sort of just starting to get a dive into it yourself. And I think that what I would like to, I have a big ask here for the people that are listening in, in Facebook world. Uh, and that are listening to the three martini lunch specifically, I would like you to go on Facebook to Todd's page, uh, referral book. And I would like you to like his uh, page. I'd also like you to uh, friend Todd on Facebook, send him a friend request and also on uh, LinkedIn as well. So that way he can really uh, get out all the information about his uh, his uh, endeavors with his road trip for referral book. So Todd, what has been your experience with uh, social media and referral book so far? How can we everyone here help you get the word out? Well, you're doing it right now and I greatly appreciate that. And I, I hope everybody follows suit. I mean, we got such a great group of natural networkers on here. I, I'm sure that you're gonna get lots of traction uh, we're excited about our relationship with you guys. We're also excited about our relationship with um, a digital, um, Boss Digital, there in Raleigh. As a matter of fact, we're, we're moving our home, with me hitting the road, we're moving our home office to Raleigh. Um, Hunter Crute, uh, our CEO, is operational living in Raleigh. So we're, we're very much Raleigh focused. And, um, but to your, to your point, we're going to be driving a lot of uh, social media traffic. We're going to be driving a lot of social media ads. We're we're not only looking for circle builders and circle members. We're actually building a field force of professional developer partners who are actually going to be involved in selling and sharing the referral book story across the country. So we're going to be using referral book, or rather Facebook and uh, LinkedIn in that regard to a great degree. Pretty excited about that. Excellent. Th thank you so much uh, for joining us and, and supporting uh, Rockstars Connect's uh, Three Martini Lunch. So, uh, you guys, I don't. We've we've had panelists uh, from your family bank uh, frequently on the show, and a lot of you may wonder uh, what your family bank is. Well, first of all, your family bank has had up to twenty events uh, with Rockstar Connect around the country, and they have helped thousands of people uh, get out of debt. And our first Rockstar Connect host uh, from uh, your family bank uh, was Mr. Uh, Mark Scher uh, from uh, South Florida. And uh, Mark, if you could share a little bit with us about what you do and what has been your success this week, that would be fantastic. Well, essentially, we teach people financial literacy. 
which is how money really works. Uh, most people are under the impression that the way to get wealthy is to earn a lot of interest or get a big return on your money. But what they don't realize is it's next to impossible to out earn the amount of interest that you're paying out to what you're losing. So our catchphrase is, if we could show you how to get out of debt in the next nine years or so, including your mortgage and student loans without spending any more than you're currently spending, can we get 20 minutes of your time? So that's pretty much in a very small peanut what we do. Um, my big success is um, I really haven't had much. Um, I had a personal issue that I've been dealing with and uh, my success was getting over that and getting back to the saddle again. Um, so that's pretty much it, short version. Don't know what else to add, Stephen. Stephen, you're muted. Stephen, you're muted. Stephen, you're muted. <laughs> Mark, you know, uh, I know you've had had a challenge last week uh, with your mother passing. Uh, everyone at Rockstar Connect uh, uh, sends uh, their regards uh, to you and your family. And thank you for being back on the panel this week. Thank you. Much appreciated. Excellent. Just so you know, if, if anyone is interested in hearing about uh, your family bank, uh, our panelists today, Tommy Episcopo, uh, David Linsky, and Robert Hayek, are all with your family bank. So pick, the, uh, I'm sorry, and Mark. and Mark, of course. So pick the, the, the face and the voice that you feel uh, most comfortable with and have a conversation uh, because they can teach you how to be your own bank uh, for your business. So please uh, check them out. And uh, thank you for the four of you uh, being on the show today. And so I'm gonna go back over to uh, Katie, if you could unmute yourself. Uh, Katie, uh, first I'm going to ask you, before we get to your social media, I'm going to ask you, so who uh, who would you like to have that conversation with, that dinner with, uh, a living person or, or someone who's passed? Um, that's a hard, that's really hard. I've really been thinking about it. And there's lots of different, you know, people and thoughts from, you know, my younger self to, you know, um, a grandpa or something like that. But I think just thinking about like another strong woman, someone who I think has like done lots of great things. Um, this may seem super random, but Megan Kelly is someone that's not a political, you know, statement at all. I've just always really liked her. I think she's a really strong woman um, and has live, lived a, 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 a diverse life. So I'd like, I'd probably want to talk to her. <laughs> that would be great. And, you know, I do follow your Facebook. You see, I make reactions to the stuff you do on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I think your Facebook is really cool because it's sort of like, you know, oh, well, there's this woman, she was a teacher, and now she runs an organization, and she stays connected with her friends, and she's like living the life in Charleston and doing all of those things. Is that all natural or is that somewhat curated? So it's kind of all... Yeah, my social media is very strategic. Um, I have my personal Facebook, my personal Instagram, and then I have Going Places Facebook, Going Places Instagram. And then I just started a Facebook group for how to start a nonprofit. And I have my LLC's Facebook page. And I have a LinkedIn page. And they're all very strategically done. Um, some big things. Um, I'm just starting to get into right now is the importance of a pre-filter on your photos um, on Instagram. I've talked to lots of social media influencers and um, I've started like playing with a few different presets and those have had substantial more likes than any of my pictures in the past because of these pre-filters. It has a very consistent look. You look at any celebrities or any influencers page, why is Dominic knocking his head like that? He's like, <laughs> where do you find these pre-filters? Where's that? So, um, you can go on Etsy and you can get them for like $3 each. Um, it's through the Lightroom app, but if you buy them through Lightroom, they're really, they're like $60. So you want to go to Etsy and just type in pre-filters and you can see, and so it's, you know, if you want like a really clean, 
very white look, um, you know, you pick one like that. I want bright and colorful because I feel like that's who I am. And that's, um, you know, what going places is. So I've been kind of playing with the right ones. Um, but so that's really in important. I also am extremely adamant and something I talk about in my, um, my course on how to start a nonprofit is to keep controversial or political opinions off of your social media. It's first of all, you're not going to change someone's mind. So what's the point? And second of all, it's going to, it could deter someone from working with you. And for me, it's like, I don't want, I'm never, I will never say my political opinions on who I'm going to vote for. If I like someone or don't like someone, like it's no one's business. It's not going to do anything except stir the pot and deter sponsors or donors. So, and I feel like with any business that could, that advice can kind of apply. So I, I'm very careful about that. I keep it light. Um, I like to, on my personal social media, I like to show a mixture of like my life because people like to get, they, they get, they get invested in it and they, they get excited. And um, so I like to do a little of my life and then a little bit of what I have going on with work, but I try not to overwhelm my personal page with going places needs this. Oh, and you want to sign up my online course? Yeah. Oh, and you, it's like, I don't want to be that like salesy person. Or it's like, ugh, every time Katie's trying to shove this down my throat. So that's why I have the other pages. And if it's like a new big important thing, I'll put it on my page. But I try to keep that light and then direct you to the other pages for more information on, on you know, going places or the online course. Well, I mean, it's one leads thing leads to another. So there was a post right. you made this week that I thought was really cool. And I showed Sarah where it was you with your teacher friends or former uh -huh. teacher friends. And it was, it looked like it was first of all, off the cover of a magazine, like off. The <laughs> Everyone was having a good time out. And I said, oh, well, you know, it makes you want to say, well, why are you talking about teachers there? And it'll make people dig into your other pages and they'll discover what you do. But I think that was a great post. And thank you for your social media tips. Jenny, I think, you know, Katie might be a good, good uh, podcast person on girls that do stuff because she does an app, uh, an awful lot. Yeah, we, I have a whole social media thing in my, um, in my online course. And like to have a social media calendar, if you don't have one of those, get one, it's free. I just use my Google calendar um, in the Google Drive. They get a social media calendar. We I plan out my posts for like the whole month, spread them out. Is it going to be a story post? Is it going to be a feed post? Is it both? And then you can get a social media intern for free. And they, I, my social media intern does all my going places stuff. Um, I just tell them what to do. And then they know other stuff just do on their own, but it's a huge save of time. It's completely remote. I've only met them each every semester once and um, they do it all. So go to, it's the Handshake website. I can share the link, but it connects to every college in the country and um, it's free. I'll share the link. Excellent, great advice, thank you. So I'm gonna have Tommy, I'll have you unmute yourself because you had a lot of thumbs up on, on what Katie was saying. Go ahead, Tommy. Sarah, can you help him unmute there? I got it. I got it. <laughs> so Tommy became a true believer in social media. He's a rock star connect host. Uh, first, I'm going to ask you, Tommy, <clears throat> who do you most like to have that meal with? Well, undoubtedly, would love to have my father back again. Okay. He's the guy that created what you see before you today. So, <laughs> um, but on a passionate side, who I would really love to sit down with and have dinner, he's no longer with us, is Steve Jobs. Um, that guy, you want to talk about an undogged determination when the entire world is telling you you're wrong and he said, nope, you're wrong. That is somebody that I'd like to hitch my cart to for sure. You know, um, I met him once back in 79. I met him with Wozniak at Stony Brook University. And the guy was just driven to almost madness, you know. Uh, and 
I've never seen anything quite like it. And to think, and my daughter works for Apple now, and most of you guys know that. And to think that his format of how he saw this whole thing becoming is still being used today in their stores, the way they sell. If you've never read his book, the book from Apple that Apple wrote about him just called Jobs, you really need to read it. Everyone in this room should read it because that guy was something else. He really was. And Sarah, Sarah will drop a link in uh, where they can find that book. Now, your social media is extremely positive. You utilize, mm -hmm. utilize a lot of memes and you're very consistent in doing it. How do, you, how do you pick those memes? Does it reflect the way you want your clients to react or is it, is it a reflection of you? Well, since my daughter has been MIA and I've been doing all the social media posts, I shouldn't say that. She'll be back in July. Um, you know, we have a, a whole folder full of quotes and memes and stuff that we just gather from everywhere, from the internet, things I see. And I always post on the Rockstar sites every morning. You see them, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I'll always post something funny on my personal page. We have a whole humor folder that I go to. And I pull something from that. And then I'm real passionate, Stephen, you know about Doberman Pinchers. Um, I belong to a couple of them pages and I'll post on there, you know. And that's it. Like Katie said, you don't want to be... You know, like every maybe third post in the in the uh, Rockstar pages will be something about what we do and how we do it. I don't bombard people with sales. They know what I do. Trust me. Mm -hmm. They know. 100%. And you know what? The thing with social media is it should reflect the way that you do your business and what you enjoy. You know, Katie, you know, it, that, her social media 100% suits hers and yours definitely suits, suits you. And, and one thing Katie said that was so true, for God's sakes, do not post anything political on your personal or your business page. No matter what side you lean, it doesn't matter. You, if you post something, one side's going to hate you. If you post something, the other side's going to hate you. Just don't do it. It is business suicide to do it. It really is. Don't do yeah, it. I mean, some people say they're happy with doing business with only 50% of the population <laughs> you don't realize that of that 50 percent of the population 75 percent of those people may hate them well let me ask everybody a question does it really matter because isn't the check the same color 100 <laughs> percent. it doesn't matter it's all green the marketing trend right now actually is to take a stand with what's happening specifically right now but what, what's happening right now isn't political like I've been very vocal about Black Lives Matter and oh. all of that because th these are human beings. Right. Like this mm -hmm. is not, I don't, I mean, if you don't agree that Black Lives Matter, I don't want your money. I mean, exactly. we and that's, and that's our, the message, right? My nonprofit is for mostly Black children. Like, right. I, you know what I mean? So like, that's to me not, this is, that's not a political thing. This is like a human being thing. Right. So a lot of a lot of the people are thinking that it's like a lot of business owners are like, I don't want to touch it because that's political and it's political. Well, they're making it political, guys. You don't see that, but they're making it political. So the easiest thing to do is to just stay away from it. They're right. making it political. I'm not blaming any side. I'm just saying it's being made political. I've okay. actually had no criticism from posting that stuff. And, right. because, and um, I'm actually on a podcast tomorrow to talk about that. The, every people been like you're so brave thank you so much i'm like this isn't bravery like i have a miniature platform and i've had thankfully zero backlash but honestly for the first time in my life even if i did have backlash i was like okay then goodbye like you're, you're right um, katie What's you're that? right katie you're right it's not about bravery it's about humanity and i thank you for that because I think people have gotten this whole thing twisted about this whole Black Lives Matter. This is not a movement. This is something that needs to get addressed. And the only way it can get addressed is to talk about it. And until we're able to sit down or, or just talk about it without people getting offended and looking at the reality of it all, we will always be fighting the same war. And this I wish is not you something all the that I the world. I don't, I, I, the people right now, 
are very, very, very decisive. And I just think it's wrong. I think it's disgusting, but that's just the way it is. You know, well, but it's would, not though. But what we're saying is the trends yeah. are, and the businesses that are taking a stand are actually being elevated and the ones that are not are actually losing business. So- Well, one of the things that I don't want to see happen because I see this happen a lot on social media and particularly when I know the people and I know who they are. If you don't believe that this is something that you strongly believe in, like Katie just shared how she feels about it. If you don't truly believe that, don't post things patronizing people. You don't need to do that. And that's where I have the problem with social I media. I um, is that's that easily, people have visible. a tendency, you don't have to appease me or patronize me because what values more to me than anything in this world is when I truly know your heart and I know who you are. And so the people that are silent about it and I know them who are not of my same race, I know their hearts, I know the things that they do, I know how they treat people. So if they don't say anything, that's okay. But those people who are trying to convince all of us, whether you're Caucasian or African American, who make posts to try to make you feel one way. And you can even read the post sometimes and, and feel that it's not authentic because they're not authentic. They don't care. They're doing what they think it's popular to do on social media. And so I think that part of it, if that can stay out of the way, I think the conversations about it, people will become hum humane about it and they will become comfortable discussing something that clearly is an issue in our country. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I don't think there's anything political about that. I think that is what mature societies do to address issues. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But however, I do think there's something wrong with those people who quote Martin Luther King, who uh, you know uh, quote other people uh, uh, civil rights leaders, but at the same time, go back and read some of their threads at the comments that they've made, you know, spewing hatred and ignorance. And that's all it is, is ignorance. But, you know, I'm mature enough to understand it, but there are a lot of people who are deeply affected by that. And so they're not mature enough to understand that it's something that we've been dealing with, with for decades, but now we have to address things. And the only way to do that is to talk about it in a respectful way to where you're not devaluing anyone. And that's, that's the know, problem I see. I don't see people discussing it in a respectful way. That's but that the problem goes back I to see. those ignorant people that I just right. mentioned. Yeah, that's I, that population does. of people. But the yeah. problem is, is there's a lot of them, Jacqueline. There's a lot of them, you know? Yeah, and, and right, it's that, unfortunate. If I can put, a, put my, my word on this, from what I'm hearing the rest of you say, uh, everyone's going to have a stand. Mm -hmm. Some of it's going to be private. Some of it is going to be held personally. Uh, what's important is that you have your integrity and you be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Or you make a statement about something that's such an important subject, you should carefully think about what you want other people to understand about your beliefs. You hit the, head, the nail on the head there, Stephen, when you said carefully if you have to think about what you need to say sometimes it's best to not say anything unless it's coming from your heart and that you truly believe in that and that's all i'm looking for you know the world we don't have enough time to listen to people who just spew out anything without even thinking about the insensitivity of it or we, we don't we don't need those people we don't even need to hear what they have to say but we do need to hear from those people who are like Katie, and we need to hear about, I wish there were more of her, we need to clone you, Katie, because you don't, you're not acting out of fear, you're acting out of passion, out of who you truly are. Well, and you. also, you need, to do, you need to do it by actions, too. So mm -hmm. you can't just make a post and say that you're supporting other people, go support their business. Exactly. Go, and go I also... I went and had a four hour conversation with a black male friend of mine about everything he's gone. I mean, to learn, to continue to educate myself and right. he opened eyes to tons of things I had never thought about, like mm -hmm. the, whole, the whole plantation thing. He was like, imagine what it's like to go to a wedding and turn your head 
and see all these slave houses right there. You would never hold a party at a Holocaust museum. Why would mm -hmm. you hold a party at a plantation when plantation slave houses have turned into museums, which are, is that part's appropriate, but the party part isn't. And I was like, I have never thought twice about that. And he just but, opened but my eyes. The, that, that, you know, it's interesting we're saying, you're saying that, Katie. My husband and I was discussing how all of these companies or leadership from companies and universities are making statements about this whole um, uh, George Floyd and just Black Lives Matter. And it's interesting how they just have a marketing person who doesn't sit down and talk with a person of color or try to educate. You don't even have to talk to a person of color. Watch some documentaries. One in particular is called 13. If you ever get a chance to watch, I think the whole world should watch it. Yeah, I've watched but, several as well. Yes, that's a way to educate yourself before just making a, a statement because you feel like you have to make one. Right, we're and all learning. I, yeah. Pardon me? We all are still learning and need to. Yes, even I'm learning. Like when I watched the documentary 13, I was like, oh my, even I'm learning. As, a, as an African-American woman, I'm learning. There are some things that even I don't know or clearly understand because I wasn't exposed to those things. And so now is a time of educating. And I have one of my board members who's one of my favorite people in the world who happens to be Jewish. But the thing I love about him is he sees the world through so many different lenses. He doesn't just focus on I'm Jewish and talk about the whole, we talk about everything. And he actually educates me. He sends me articles that talk about uh, the history of the Jewish people and what they've endured. But at the same time, he'll send me an article about something I didn't know about African-Americans that totally blows me away. And I'm being educated about the hardships and the struggles of Jewish people. And I'm also being educated about the hardships and struggles of my own people. And so I think it's so important that before these people, these companies come out with these statements, because once you say it, you, you've said it, and I'm so tired of reading or, or hearing about insensitive statements, but you come back and you apologize after, you could have prevented all of that had you educated yourself. Take the time to do what Katie did. Talk to a person who's African-American, talk to, I re look at a documentary, read, I mean, there's so many ways that you can save yourself from having to come back and make an apology that is never going to be accepted because you could have prevented that had you taken the time to educate yourself. Excellent point. So, so Jacqueline, just so people know a little bit more where you're coming from, if you wanted to share a little bit more about your terrific organization like Katie did, uh, people understand that you put your money where your mouth is. Well, I'm happy to share that. Um, in 2015, um, my husband and I founded the Derek Wittenberg Foundation. And that foundation came to existence. We have been thinking about it for over 20 something years. And it comes, uh, it comes, it comes back to me, my struggles as a college student. Um, as I said, I'm one of 12 children. And by the way, I have to say that we're all college educated, but it was a struggle. Um, and for me, by the time it was my turn, I was, I'm the oldest of the last three. Uh, we, we've helped each other along the way. By the time it came to me, I was faced with um, having to uh, either not graduate college because I had a younger sister and brother or finding other ways that, was going, that wasn't going to leave me in a hardship after college. And so I worked for the very organization at that time that provided me that opportunity and that was the College Foundation. However, back during that time in the early 80s, College Foundation's uh, interest rates were very low for students in North Carolina. Um, if you were a resident in North Carolina, you could get a College Foundation loan at like 4.5% and it was great. And I actually worked there as a loan collector to pay back that money because I deemed it necessary to pay it back. Um, so as time progressed, I've seen so many students have to drop out of college when they get to their 
junior and senior year because they don't have finances to complete that degree. And if they don't have them, the worst thing they can do is try to go out now to get a loan because it's not like it was back in the 80s. And what's happening is the average college student in the state of North Carolina is graduating with just an undergraduate degree with $30,000 worth of debt. That is insane. And it prevents them from being able to start their lives, um, even in some cases to go on to, to further their education. Because what I like to say is that what we're doing through our foundation for those students is we're providing them an opportunity to meet the requirement, which is to have an accredited undergraduate degree, which doesn't guarantee you anything, but it positions you for a lot of things. And so those students would not be able to do that. That population of students that we assist would not be able to do that without organizations like ours. And if I recall, if I did my research correctly, we are the only foundation or organization in this area that I know of that actually provides scholarships to help that specific population of students. And we are giving our scholarships are not less than $5,000 because we don't believe that anything less can even begin to put a dent into the needs of these students. And so to date, since 2015, we've given away close to a half a million dollars and we've been able to help over 100 students from six different colleges and universities in the Triangle area, NC State, Meredith College, St. Augustine's University, Shaw University, and we're huge supporters of community college. So Wake Tech, we've been supporting since 2015 because we believe Wake Tech gives an opportunity to everyone across the board. They have a lot of um, non-traditional students who attend Wake Tech. They have a lot of international students who do not qualify for any federal funding. And so that's where our foundation comes in because we don't have federal funding. So we can help any student who needs assistance. And Jacqueline, mm -hmm. may I ask you a quick question? Sure. Uh, so, you know, one of the things about success is contagious is we like to really look at a success that you've had in, in this past week. So can, can you tell us something that you that's happened with your uh, foundation this week that's been a big success that you'd like to tell everybody about here on the panel? Yes, one of our students whom I've mentioned from day one, she was a 2016 recipient of our scholarship and she's a Shaw University uh, graduate. I am honored to say that my mentorship along with other um, contributors to our foundation has helped her to uh, supported her as she took the dental admissions test and she's gonna be applying to dental school at University of North Carolina. And that is a huge thing to me because this is a young lady that had some terrible hardships. So she's an example of when people provide opportunity for you and you make the best of that opportunity, <clears throat> The sky is the limit. And I am just thrilled. And, and also, I'd like to say this, and I had nothing to do with this part, but was very thrilled that I gave, I've had the conversation with these students that nobody's going to ring your doorbell for opportunity. You have to continue the work. Well, she shadows my, my dentist. And, and that's another thing that I'm thrilled about, because there's another uh, resource of support to give her the upper hand as she enters into the next phase of her life, which is um, coming from very difficult background, but making it all the way to this point. And I believe she's going to be a successful, um, successful dental professional. It, that, it a sounds terrific, uh, that's a terrific success. And I think a really good partner for you on the panel, and I'm going to go to him next is David Linsky. So David Linsky is a young guy. David, how old are, are you? 24. 24 years of age, and he, what he has made his mission is to help people get out from under student debt. I love that. So what he does is instead of, without people spending any more additional money, just utilizing their money already servicing their debt, he mm -hmm. teaches them how to pay off that debt very quickly and then become their own bank so that they can be entrepreneurs, et cetera. So I definitely want to connect the two of you. I think it'll be a match made in heaven. 
But let's let's go over to David over in sunny Florida. Uh, David, who would you most like to have a dinner with? Uh, firstly, Jacqueline, I think what you're doing to help you know students get some sort of funding, anything helps, is awesome. Especially because I see them after graduation, and a lot of times they don't get any help. Mm -hmm. uh, terrible. But uh, back to your question, Stephen. The person I would really like to, you know, sit down with and have a meal with um, is actually the person I'm named after, my dad's grandfather, who passed a few months before I was born. You know, my dad just says that he was his favorite person, and uh, to be given his name and the uh, opportunity to speak and learn from him would would be uh, tremendous and uh, something I, I wish I could do. So that that's who I would choose. And then, excellent. That's an excellent choice. I mean, I, I would, you know, my grandfather was a, a, the number one uh, person motivating me to do what I do today, as far as connecting people and helping people and trying to be as unselfish as possible. And that would be exactly who I would want to spend, you know, much more than the evening, because although your grandfather passed before, you know, you were born, my grandfather was with me my entire life until you know I was 13, so I was blessed in that. But now as I get older, uh, I can remember what he looks like from like pictures, you know? I don't really remember what he looks like 100%. I don't remember, we didn't have social media, so I don't have audio tapes of him or anything like that. I don't remember his voice. A lot of what I remember probably is because of what other people have told me. And, and keep that up. So I'm sure everyone here, if they had an opportunity to speak with someone in their life that has passed, that's who they would who would they would choose. Thank Stephen, you. Stephen, could yeah. I ask you this one question? I'm starting to feel a little left out here <laughs> because okay. you didn't ask me who would I would like to sit well, down. Well, I'm to sorry. Dinner. We sort of got a little out of structure for a while. So Jacqueline, who would you most like to to uh, have that dinner with? Neil DeCross Tyson. Um, I'm not, yes, let me tell you, he's a neurophysicist and he's just this extraordinary human being. I did get to meet him briefly when I lived in New York. I taught at this amazing high school in Westchester County, Pelham, which is the community I lived in. And our middle school teach science teachers managed to get him to come to our school. We had a biotechnology program, which is what I taught and get him, they managed to get him to attend our biotechnology program and speak. And I've always been fascinated with him because he makes you think. And um, so I would give nothing more than to sit down and have dinner with him because I know it's going to be an extraordinary conversation. Well, and you're, he, you're he was- exactly the person that could put that dinner together, I'm, I'm sure. I, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's at the top of my list. <laughs> Excellent. So guys, we're coming up on the four o'clock hour and I want to give everyone the opportunity to speak. So I'm going to back off from social media just for now. I think we had a great explanation of it with, with a lot of the people here that are very good at it. But I do want to know who you want to have dinner with. So uh, Rhonda Sharon. I think I think for me, it would be my dad. He um, passed when he was very young. He was only 64. So we never got to see his grandchildren. And, <clears throat> you know, just, just to be able to kind of, you know, fast forward the reel and show him how life turned out. Because what's, what's interesting to me, and all of a sudden it just kind of struck me, is he passed away at 64, and that's the age I am. So, you know, it, it's really kind of strange when I think about that. First, I can't even imagine that I'm 64. But second, that, you know, it was in 1987 when he passed. So it would definitely be my dad. I'd love for my girls to meet him. It's funny that, you know, you say you're 64, because I always feel that we're contemporary. And actually, I'm 51 and you're 64. But we get along really well. So age is, you know, no determination here to friendship, 100%. Age is just a number, Sarah said. Yep. Uh, correct. Uh, let, let me go over to uh, Robert Hayek. Robert, who would you like to have that great dinner with? Uh, my dad. My dad, unfortunately, passed away at the age of 56. Last 15 years of his life, he couldn't walk, talk, or eat. And I don't even have any type of memory of any type of conversation with him because he was sick most of my life. So 
it, it's a tough one. Yeah, that well, would definitely be the one I want. That's you're you're some sort of tearing up here. Yes, thank thank you for sharing that, Robert. Uh, Mark, one one last dinner with your mom. I could, you know, my mom has been around and for a long time. One last dinner with her wouldn't be bad, but to really answer the question, mm -hmm. I've always been a space geek and I'm sitting here <laughs> looking in my office at the wall. There's a picture of John Glenn and a letter from the head of NASA in 1963. Cause when I was a little kid, I used to make my parents send a dollar in my name to NASA. So I'd love to have dinner with John Glenn. I thought he was just an outstanding person all around. Yeah, That's these ast day. these astronauts, they're they're amazing. I got the <laughs> opportunity to go hear Buzz Aldrin speak in Coral Gables at uh, the Museum of Science and get a book signed by him. Don't forget, he was also a U.S. Senator, John Lott. That's right. He, he transcended said, a lot of different things. And, uh, that, now, very, now I know. Very interesting. You, when I'm out, when I'm out in bookstores or antique stores, if I see some astronaut memorabilia, I'll keep you in mind. Thanks. May see a, a special gift from me. Uh, Katie, did you get it? You, you already had your opportunity. Uh, Todd, did you say who you would like to 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 have that dinner with? The, um, my absolute choice would be my grandmother, who was my far and away closest relative. But I would love to have dinner with George Patton. I think that would be an extremely intriguing event. Yeah, and hopefully he won't slap you. <laughs> That's correct. We have a George Patton dog. We have an English Bull Terrier. So whenever we're walking the dog, well, this is something interesting with an English Bull Terrier because Spuds McKenzie, if you're from the 80s, you know Spud McKenzie. That was an English Bull Terrier. The Target dog is an English Bull Terrier. And um, George, Patton's dog. George Patton's dog was an English Bull Terrier, as was the dog in the movie, uh, you know, with Ice Cube uh, Friday. Next Friday. Next Friday. So whenever anybody sees our dog and they mention the name of it, we know exactly their age uh, and you know what movies they watch and what history they enjoy. So it's a big uh, determination. Uh, Clint, who would you like to have dinner with? Uh, man, that's tough. Um, I mean, it's like I kind of want to go with everybody and say my dad, he died in 1985. I was not even five years old. Him and my grandfather died in a plane crash locally because they flew their own Cessna. Uh, but like living, um, I would probably say uh, Lewis Howes, um, who has probably the most successful podcast in the country, excluding present company. Sorry, Jenny. Um, so, um, but he has had he has like over a thousand podcasts. He has some of the best guests. So it's like all of his guest knowledge. I would like to know. Um, but one in particular is Jim Quick. So if I had to choose one, it'd probably be Jim Quick. He is phenomenal if you guys don't have his book limitless you should get it it will change your life hey, we're only about two degrees separation or at most from lewis house so elise archer who you know is a panelist on this show mm -hmm. uh, yep. he's one of her clients oh no joke i love i love elise and i listen to lewis house almost daily because i'm catching up on all thousand podcasts and so he's got some to elise and she could at least probably make a phone call happen for you you know what I'll do that. He already comments on all of my comments on his posts on LinkedIn and Instagram. So I'm all over that. Thanks, Stephen. You're welcome. Dominic, who would you like to connect with? Who would you like to have that dinner with? We already did me, but you want to go again? <laughs> no, you don't get to go again. I just got a little bit out of order. That's, <laughs> but, That's uh, fair. I'm going to go over to Doug uh, Nicodemus. All right. So that's an interesting question. So I'm a big sports guy and uh, uh, this, this may shock a lot of you, but, uh, and, and a huge golfer, but uh, I'd love to sit down and have a conversation with Tiger Woods. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, the things that he's been able to accomplish both on the, the, the golfing side, as well as on the, uh, the, the issues that he's had on his personal side, I think it would be a, a, a tremendous opportunity to have a conversation with him. So I'll go with Tiger Woods. Well, that's great. Well, if you're a big uh, golf fan, uh, Sarah's grandfather is sort of responsible for Tiger Woods and all these greats you see today being successful in golf. Her grandfather, uh, Doug Beeman, 
excuse me, why do I say Doug? Because I'm talking to Doug. Dean Beeman, he was the PGA commissioner. Oh, wow. And invented stadium golf, made golf a charitable organization, and made it possible so that people like Tiger Woods could make money playing golf instead of keeping that amateur status, which they did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. While running an insurance agency on the side, he did all of those things. Wow. So, uh, Jenny. Who would yeah. you like to have your dinner with? So um, I think, um, and this is like just me geeking out. Um, I don't know who knows who Donnie Deutsch is, but he runs this like amazing branding advertising agency in New York City. <laughs> and I would like to sit down with him. Um, I just like, I listen to him talk and I like, I either feel incredibly validated because I said the same thing yesterday or like, oh my God, I want to pick his brain. So, yeah. And, and I'm going to be fair, Jenny, because when you heard the question was about social media, you got all excited. And then I took away the opportunity for you to talk about social media. Hey, it's fine. Y'all reach out to me. I'm going to, give you, opportunity. I'm going to give you back that opportunity since social media is your thing. Yeah to talk about some great tips and talk about some great social media you've seen recently. Yeah, so, um, I mean, it was funny because I was listening to Dominic talk and I was like, oh, I'm having that proud mama bear moment. Like he's, he's saying all the things that I talk about in my, um, uh, that, that we worked through together as a client. But I mean, the number one thing is people recognize when you're feeding them BS, right? So like, when you are strategic and when you are intentional about your social media, mm -hmm. um, then people will follow you just because you're you. So a lot yeah. of the perception is that you have to come up with this like gorgeous, you know, like these, these people with, you know, these companies with million dollar marketing budgets that have the staff and, and a lot of them are interns to do their social media, <laughs> right? But in reality, people want to get to know you so that they like you more, so that they trust you, and then eventually they'll buy, they'll, they'll seek you out for your product or service. So that's number one. And um, one of the things that Katie was talking about um, with the content calendar and, and how she does her creation is um, something that every marketer will teach you as batch content creation. So that's something I do on the photography side. I help my clients create batch content and then I help my content marketing clients create content systems to batch their content to make it so that you're working smarter, not harder. That's my motto. Um, one of the many. <laughs> um, because it's so, so, so important. People don't use social media effectively because they don't know how, because they, they get overwhelmed. Again, throwing that spaghetti at the wall um, and hoping something sticks versus being intentional and strategic. And when you look at, you know, I have clients that look a year ahead because they're in industries where they have compliance and they need to get, you know, emails okayed and posts okayed and things like that. So when you can do that, you know, your business will improve for it. And you know, I am interested, I know Dominic threw it out there earlier in the chat. I'm interested to know if, if Rhonda thinks that puppy pictures and food pictures will trend on LinkedIn the same way they do on Facebook. <laughs> I think it depends on who's putting those up and how they do it and how it's, uh, but uh, I do want to say something about social media. You talked about working smarter, not harder. A lot of people uh, feel that, you know, social media is just, it's an advertising tool. Uh, I come from a networking standpoint. I want to be able to keep with the keep in connection with my largest, you know, my large sphere of influence, which is in the hundreds of thousands with my social media groups all over the place. I can't have everybody over to my house for dinner, but mm -hmm. I can show them what I had for dinner and ask them what they had for dinner. I can't meet their dog. I can't meet their kids, but I can show them my children and my dog, and I can ask them about that. I don't and really, I love your food post. <laughs> thank you. So, you know, Jackie's posts, uh, Jacqueline's posts are very similar to mine. Family, friends, but then people are interested. And, you know, I get so much business just by posting. And people will see my post. I'll see them make a comment on it or a reaction. 
And then all of a sudden, a, a little message or it pops up in Messenger. Hey, Stephen, I'm glad you made that post because it reminded me that I wanted to talk to you about this opportunity. When do you have time to grab on a phone? So it's it's staying constantly in front of them, but also me achieving what I like to do as a person, which is I love to entertain. I love to meet people. And I want to make my friends feel important because they are important to me. And even if I'm not talking to them every day, you know, I'm thinking about them. Like I haven't seen, you know, or really spoken to Tommy or Mark in the last week and a half, two weeks for whatever reason. But I'm hoping that they see my posts and know that, you know, I'm, I'm still out there like them fighting the good fight to help other people. Mm -hmm. That's my two cents on, uh, on networking. Uh, once it's again, like you're I, inviting you know, them into a conversation. That's why you invite people yeah. into a conversation and just have, it just so happens that social media is your platform now. Well, and it has been, you know, forever and a day, but uh, it's a tool, you know, it's mm -hmm. a tool that I can use to reach as many people as possible. I, I will say something though. A lot of people say you should never delete a post. If you put up a post, you know, sometimes you tell a joke and the joke isn't funny to anyone or they don't understand it. You know what? Delete it. It's <laughs> there's a delete button there. If you make mistakes in your spelling, or your wife looks over at you and I said, "Did you mean to say that? Your grammar is completely wrong." Delete it. Edit it. Tommy, did you have something you wanted to add on that? Go ahead. Unmute yourself. Can you unmute him? Okay. I Time. I'm constantly updating my spelling because it's bad. <laughs> it's same. my wife and daughter will proofread everything and say, <laughs> "You got you can't put that out there like that." I gotta change it. So Tommy, do you know about connecting Grammarly.com to your Grammarly spell check to your um, to your mobile? Get the mobile app. It is the most wonderful thing in the world. I tell all of the students that I, I work with. Please, please download the Grammarly uh, app. And I started uh, to tell them about it because I got tired of looking at uh, all of the posts where people don't know the difference between you conjugating verbs like T-O and T-O-O. And it was just really getting under my skin and all the, the misspelled words. So I told them about Grammarly.com and I've actually taken a little uh, poll. And I, I take a look at their post now and I'm so impressed. I'm just thrilled. Yeah, I mean, my problem on, on social media is homophones. So, you know, I'm typing out and I'll put there and I'll use, you know, the wrong usage of, you know, certain words. Mm -hmm. But we're coming up on uh, the end. It's four o'clock. Uh, what I'd like to say, I'd want to thank uh, Todd Swicegood and uh, uh, Doug Nicodemus of Referral Book for being a primary sponsor of uh, Three Martini Lunch. Uh, they're going to be back next week and they're going to share with us a little bit about what happened on their road trip because they are on the road doing this. Todd is a glutton for punishment. He is, we're about the same age and he is actually going to be in his car and drive to 26 different states. So we definitely want to hear more about that. Now, uh, usually I ask everybody who they want to connect with. It's, it's a little bit late for that, but I, I'm going to make some suggestions. I think Jenny should connect with Katie. I think Jackie and Katie should connect with one another. Uh, Robert, you should definitely be connecting uh, with Rhonda Cher. Uh, David, we lost David. David, you should be connecting with Katie uh, and uh, Jacqueline. And everyone should be connecting with uh, Jenny and Clint and uh, Tommy and, and Mark as well. So everyone, if you could just, uh, did I leave anyone out, Sarah? Uh, everyone, everyone was mentioned? Okay, yeah, make sure, you know, I asked you that special thing. Let's show a lot of love uh, to Referral Book today. Go on LinkedIn, go on Facebook. Uh, Todd needs more friends on Facebook because he's going to be lonely on this trip. And I know he's going to be doing some live broadcasts and tell you what it's like all over the country because we really aren't doing trips like that right now. But he is. So everyone raise your hand and wave goodbye. We'll see you next week on Three Martini Lunch. Check out Rockstar Connect on rockstarconnect.com uh, so you can find out all the events of our hosts that are coming up. You can also make a contribution uh, to support this program. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.